Yeah, right. Um, we're at Meanwood, we've finished this one. Um, when we came to look at this one, the customer had a really uneven bit of ground. Um, I'll, I'll show you the difference, but there were like 700 mil difference from front to back. So uh, what we normally use is a pile system, concrete pile with threaded bars, and they weren't suitable for this because it was too high. So we opted for a different method, but I'll show you that as well. So the customer wanted us to build this room and for the purpose of um, doing some music production. So there were a lot of soundproofing going into it. When I say soundproofing, it wasn't to actually stop the sound from escaping the room and like not annoying the neighbours as it were. It was to actually to have better acoustics in the room for when he's doing, producing his sound. So we'll go have a look at it and I'll explain it as we go. As we go. And I'll explain it as we do. Right, every single job we obviously take our rubbish away. Every single job we have a skip on, we'll get rid of all the rubbish like that. We'll leave the garden exactly the way we found it. Every single job, I notice I've not seen one other company that supply toilets for their staff. Um, every job has a toilet so that we're not actually coming in your house. The only point we come in your house is at the end of the job to connect up to your power and your internet. Um, like I say, every job has a toilet. Oh. <laughs> Right, so we've connected to his power supply. Obviously, we've put another breaker in there. I haven't got the key for it at the moment, um, but that's where we've connected up. We've run a 10 mil steel wired diamond, which is sufficient for this room. You can see our Cat 6 we've brought from the customer's internet supply as well. So we've brought that round. We've gone down his garden. Now, the customer's having some building work at the moment, but it wasn't too much of an issue for us. We've got our cable round. We've dug it down under the scaffold there, and we've brought it down this slate bed. So what the customer wanted... He wanted, if John just stays there, you'll get the aspect of this now. He, he had a little piece of garden there and he wanted to tuck the, the garden room in behind this garage so that he could still have plenty of garden. So what we've done, like I say, I'll drop back a picture now and you can see how, how uneven the floor is. So John and Josh have run this sleeper board around there and we've dropped some slate around so the customer's got a nice access to walk around. You can see there, we've clad this elevation in cedar. Um, it's hand-picked, we've treated it in a UV stabiliser as always. We've got a little PIR security light up there which will point up the garden um, so when the customer comes down in the dark days it'll light his way. We've also got a two-gang outlet socket there as well and you can see there we've just run the cedar to there um, that's what you actually vis visually can see from the end of the garden so you can't see the non no maintenance cladding that runs straight down there we've built that as tight as possible and i'll explain the build process to you in a minute once i showed you around the outside so he's got an opening window there as well and he's got this fully glazed door um, if John just goes back up there, I'll just explain something to you again. Um, yeah. Right, so obviously he didn't want to lose too much. We've took the building back. So instead of putting our normal roof overhang, which would look a bit weird because you had this building coming out and jutting out again on the roof overhang, we've kept the overhang to a very bare minimum. So what we've done, instead of putting the downlighters in, we've dropped a little LED strip along there. I don't know if John can see that. And we've also put a nice little trim round to conceal it as well. So it actually just gives it a little wash of light, which drops down to the building. All our doors and windows are aluminium. They're amphosite grey, which is obviously... John, amphosite grey. Yeah. They're not amphosite grey at all. They're amphosite grey, which obviously is still highly in fashion. Uh, whether or not that's going to change in the future, I don't know. It's a fully glazed door. You can just see it down the side here as well again. We've kept it tight to the fence there as well, as much as we could to allow building it. You can see we've got a gutter on there as well, as well as a downpipe black fascia and soffit and a one-piece rubber membrane so if john just backs up to the fence i'll explain a little bit because what i'm going to do i'm going to drop in the photographs we took from john's elevation now where john is stood is where we took the pictures originally so you can see over in the back there the furthest one on the left hand corner there's a 700 mil difference from that back corner to this front side so obviously our rods would have been coming out of the ground somewhere and i was worried about lateral movement so what we yeah. did so what we did we got this 400 rib pipe um John and the guys, they, they, they dug holes around the base of it, basically, um, and then we put the pipes in. We lasered them off with a level. We got them nice and level. We supported them with some battens, and then we cut little tooth segments out of them, so when the concrete went into the bottom of the pipes, it also came up, and, it, and then encased the pipe into the hole in the ground, and then we filled the pipe completely to the top of the concrete. So basically, we have six piers, which then support our building. We put three rods down the middle to take any bounce out of the floor, and that then gave us our level patch of ground. So with that in mind, you had that awful bit of land. It was in the shade. You can see it's there. It's completely shrouded by trees and by a fence and by the garage. So what we did then, um, we, had the, we had the issue of, of building it tight to the, to the, um, to the garage there. So. Because space was obviously a premium, we built this wall on the floor, we got this part metal clad up to there, and then we stood the wall up and built it in situ. 
putting um, putting the fascias on and the, the, the P trims for the rubber roof also that, that that gave us a few issues as well but we managed to get over that as well so again this fence wall we built that we stood it up against this wall while we clad it and we lifted it across and dropped it down the wall at the rear of the building we were able to actually get behind that so that one was just built as normal and then we clad it at a later date oh, so all them three elevations there the metal clad no maintenance you'll never need to get them to them again so let's have a look inside like i say it's a little bit different this one um like i said the customer wants to do sound production in here some some kind of music editing or something i'm not quite sure um what, what he did actually say what did he say john it's just music production, music production yeah so what he wanted us to do, he supplied the materials for the soundproofing. Now, soundproofing, there's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of different aspects you can follow. So we followed what he wanted us to do. Um, so let's start with the roof. The roof is double boarded. It's got um, acoustic plaster boards. There's two layers of that. And in between the first layer of plaster boards is the rubber matting, which was self-adhesive and we stuck to the roof. The walls, exactly the same again. So what we've done, we've built our timber construction wall. We've infilled with um, PIR insulation and then we've put sound block insulation in there as well then. And then on the walls end, there was like a metal channel with some um, sound clips. What were they called, John? Um, sound clips, were they, what were they called? I think they were called. <laughs> John can't remember, neither can I. So there was some kind of metal clip, I can't remember, I, I think it was a sound clip, and then that held a metal channel, which then went on some acoustic plasterboard, again the rubber matting, and then again another layer of acoustic plasterboard. Um, and then obviously it got skimmed. The floor was another thing as well, so we put down, um, again, customer supplied, a rubber matting, it was about 15 mil thick, I think it was, and then on top of that, we OSB'd on that. And then, um, I don't know if you can see, there's like a, a blue foam then which traps between the floor and the wall and the skirting board sits on that and pushes down on that. So the idea is every single structure, it, uh, every single wall, floor, ceiling rather, is independent to each other. So they're actually joined apart from the fact that they're joined with plaster. Acoustic sealant was then put all around the, 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 um, the joints. So when we boarded it, when we boarded it, um, so we boarded the ceiling, we've acoustic sealed that, we've boarded the wall, we've kept a gap, we've acoustic sealed that. So one, one wall and one ceiling is not actually touching each other. Um, they're all independent, like I say. So that was the customer's request. Um, he also requested that the plasterboard wasn't penetrated, so that meant not cutting in back boxes, not cutting in lights in the ceiling and all that. So everything had to be running trunking. Um, and these lights as well that the customer wants. Right, so the lights are spaced this way because the customer says, um, well, he advises that something about the sound bouncing off each other so they don't want to be actually opposite each other. And he says it's good that the room isn't parallel as well, again, for sound benefits. So that's it. It's another fantastic build that I'm more than happy with the finish of. A little bit different for us, threw up a lot of challenges. The position of the building, the location of the building, the lay of the land, 700 fall right over at this side. So this side's literally 700 deeper than that side. Um, I was going to build a wall but I'm no bricklayer so we opted for the concrete piles which worked an absolute treat concrete piers rather they worked a treat so that's it he's got a 3.5 room it's 2 metres at one end it's about 1.8 at this end it's absolutely perfect for him and it's exactly what he wanted we've took advantage of a crappy old little piece of land that he now utilised and he'll, this will last him a lifetime without a shadow of a doubt so if you'd like one of these garden rooms you can drop us a line and Shalom will get back to you um, and we'll try and fit you in. We are obviously busy. I said it before that we are building the finest garden rooms in the country and I have no doubt about that. I've looked at other people's work. A lot of people are starting to follow us now and use our techniques as well. Um, but if, if you want one of these garden rooms, basically, give us a shout and we'll see if you can fit you in. So if you've liked watching this, and maybe it's the first time you're watching this, please like and subscribe. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well because we drop these videos quite a lot. Not just these videos as well, but tutorials. Um, we do a lives as well. What we're going to try and do now is we do a live once a month, maybe on a Saturday when people are at home and they can tune in and watch it and fire some questions across to us. I don't always get a chance to answer the questions, but if I do, I will do. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.